Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad y'all are all here. Today, I am going to go through the top 10 USA-made frame locks in my collection. Frame locks being, you know, your exposed frame lock there. Starting out with number 10, which is my little three and a quarter inch Spartan Harsey in uh, the Plague Doctor pattern. But so what I was gonna do is go through, look at the top 10 in my collection, why they're the top 10, and just kind of pontificate on them. First thing I wanna do though is say thank you to all the channel members. Thank you all so much. And thank any of you who come in to watch my knife, my EDC content, to stop through and take your time. I appreciate it. If you're so inclined, I really, really appreciate it if you take the time to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon if you haven't had a chance yet. It would really help me out. The Spartan Harsey three and a quarter inch is a little thumb stud deployment knife that's on washers. It is, this particular one is an S45 VN. It has the etched out plague doctor motif which was kind of what attracted me to this knife and made me try the spartan i picked up a full size because i liked it so much um, this little one just seems to get a little more pocket time because it is a smaller knife i'm a smaller guy i've got some big knives in this collection um, but this is a tactical folder it's got a thicker grind um, still very slicey cutter air there very slicey, but at the same time, very thick behind the edge. Just a great little slurpy saver, a great little hard use knife. The frame lock engages very well. I will in full disclosure say that I have frame locked or spine whacked all these, but I don't spine whack my frame locks because it wears them down, I think. So these have been spine whacked. They've all passed. They are all good. And yes, there are hinderers in here. Um, I might even whack them for your enjoyment, but I doubt it. Any case, this is number 10. This is the Spartan Harsey three and a quarter inch, the little guy, and it is an S45. It is a Plague Doctor motif, and I really like it. I really like the construction. I like the frame lock. I like the access. I like the detent, and I even like the washers. Moving on, we come to number nine, and we have the Spartan Harsey SHF. This is a crosshatch, a kind of a hybrid G10, um, front side scale and backspacer, titanium um, lock side with the frame lock that, I'm not gonna do this on all of them guys, they don't fail, very good geometry, absolutely no lock stick. Had a little bit of lock stick when I first got it, and it did not deploy as easily. Um, it broke in. It's also on washers, um, but just a great, great carry knife. The SNG is kind of the middle of the road. There's a PT-207 that's a little smaller version, and then there's the SMF, I think, which is a bigger version. I like this version the best. Um, I think it's just a fantastic knife. It's in PD-1 tool steel. Whoops. Super slicey, but also very tactical, right? So it's going to be a little thicker behind the edge, more of a soft tissue wood chopper. Then it's going to be a paper slicer, but it's very much a hard use knife, very much a strap popper, very much a prying tool if you needed it to be. Just a great knife. I'm a big fan. Um, I didn't think I would be. I came to the Strider game late. But I do really like this knife so much that it is number nine on my top 10 um, frame lock knives. And these could kind of be interchangeable. So there are no huge gaps between number 10 and number one. This guy's number nine just for sake of putting them out, which brings us to number eight. And number eight is my Medford Infraction. This is a Greg Medford knife. It is a finger hole deployment, which I just failed. Finger hole deployment, hollow ground S35 VN blade. Doesn't fail. Um, has a really thick 
scales, very thick blade, um, overbuilt tank of a knife, also has a flipper tab if you're not into the whole middle finger flick thing, which I am. Um, has a fantastic finger choil. It's, um, for me, it's considered kind of a larger, medium, larger size knife. For my buddy A to Z, who's a bigger fella, he thinks it's too small for him. So it's about the same length as, let's just, it's going to be bigger than the bug out, but this will give you an idea. And then here is a Sharpie. So it's a bigger knife. You know, it's about half an inch larger than the bug out. But anywho, it is definitely one of my favorite frame locks. You got to over travel there. Um, I love this knife. It's the stars and bars pattern. Um, just a really, it was my first Medford and probably one of my favorites. I've got one on this list that's going to come up, but this is the infraction. It is number eight, which brings us to number seven. Number seven, guys, is my Knife Joy exclusive Hinderer Eclipse Flipperless, Flipper Delete model. So this is a factory Flipper Delete. You can see the triway system there. It is on bearings. It is running on skiffs. It is absolutely glassy. Drop shut action, CPM 20 CV. This is stonewash bronze. I found a smooth stonewash bronze scale and then added some blue hardware, um, battle blue hardware to make it. Doesn't fail. Um, to make it a little bit more unique. And that's kind of why it's my favorite. Fits good in the pocket. I like not having the flipper tab, even though all my other hinders have a flipper tab and that does not bother me. I like even using it sometimes, but I do like having the flipper delete version. It's a great knife. Again, a tactical knife with a thicker grind. Not going to be the most slicey on the list. Definitely not going to be the least slicey, but CPM 20 CV, the Rick Hinderer Eclipse with the flipper delete, which if I'm not mistaken, was the Knife Joy exclusive. And it is absolutely reverse finger flickable, drop shutty, great knife. Which brings us to number 109876, which could easily be number one. This is the McNeese Mac 2, three and a half inch. Fantastic frame lock made right here in my home state of Alabama. Um, has some of the best detent of any of the knives in my collection. Um, it is snappy. It has got a wickedly sharp hollow ground magna cut blade. Um, I love the acid etched shock pattern on this particular knife. Um, has just everything done right, right? I mean, this knife, there is absolutely nothing. I don't know why I keep doing that. That I don't like about it. Has fantastic lock bar access. Has absolutely drop shut action. That's me early dropping it because that's my detent right there. Or my break point. I don't have to go that far. I just have to go right there. Great knife. I love it. It's a medium sized knife. Fits my hand very well. The clip works great. Doesn't take up any space in my pocket. I will probably eventually get a backspacer from McNeese for this because they do sell them and they do look wickedly cool. And may even upgrade my clip because this is a lifetime knife. I really like it. Um, huge fan in McNeese knives. And this is the Mac 2, three and a half inch, coming in at number six, which brings us to number five and the second Medford in this collection. This is a Medford that is on bearings and it's actually on skiffs now. This is the Medford Slim Midi. So this knife is much different than the Medford we just looked at because it is more in line with the bug out than it is with the thickness of the infraction or some of the other Medfords that you'll see. Um, and, and I really like it. It is an EDC knife. 
this one comes in the falling leaves pattern where you've got these etched out leaves that are falling that's the motif and then you've got this kind of lightning anno this is a dlt exclusive if i'm not mistaken in s90v this is the drop point not the tanto it has fantastic lock bar access you go kind of right at it it's a little bit different because you don't have it necessarily milled out but you've got a target and then if you see here you've got a place where your finger my finger literally goes right in spreads it out no lock stick very smooth action very ergonomical handle titanium and s90v it um it fits my hand like a glove it fits my pocket like a glove if i had anything i could do to make this knife better it would be have a little bit different clip design something that had a little bit more retention it does go in and out of pocket very very well but it just doesn't seem to have a lot of grab granted is that ever going to be a problem for me no not at all because i will literally not be doing cartwheels or hanging upside down which is the only time i think it would be a problem but these little external stops, you can use at the thumb stud if you want to. But you've also got these fullers. Fantastic, thin gentleman's knife that is an absolute beast. I'm so glad I found the S90V version. This was my uh, second Medford, and this is by far my favorite. So coming in at number five, we've got the Medford Slim Midi, which will bring us to number four. And number four is another small knife. I have several hinders. We were just looking at the hinder or clips. This is a three inch XM18. So the three inch XM18 is more in line with the three and a quarter inch Spartan Harsey. And like, I don't want to do a spoiler, but smaller than some of the other. It's, it's, a, it's a mini size knife, right? We'll call it that. But this knife is fantastic. It's on bearings. It does have a triway system, so you can run it on washers, Teflon, or phosphorus bronze. It is thinner blade stock than the Eclipse or the XM18. It is a worn cliff blade style, which I really like. Great for detail cuts. Great for... Um, just an EDC knife. The finger choil, sharpening choil, works well for me as a finger choil. Little three inch blade, good bit narrower than our full size Eclipse or XM18. So if I had my XM18 out here, you would see that it's the same thickness in blade stock and in scale thought stock as the Eclipse. The three inches are going to be more gentleman carry package, more light carry packages this one came with a g10 scale this is in battle bronze i did find a stonewashed titanium scale um, but just a great little frame lock knife again one that you don't ever have to worry about failing the geometry on it's great um, i've never had a problem with with any of these but that's just me and my luck right everybody's experiences are different this one's in 20 uh, cv Stonewash blade, battle bronze or battle blue scales, both show side and lock side, and just a fantastic little specimen. This is the Hinder XM18 3 inch, which brings us to number three. And number three is any of these next knives could be number one, but this is the SPK Lamia. This is the Friday the 13th 2023 edition that was in crew wear with either the distressed black or the distressed orange handle. It is on washers. It is perfectly engineered. It is probably the best engineered knife or one of the top, definitely one of the top three finest engineered knives in my collection. Probably one of the best cutters. I love crew wear. 
I know that this knife comes out in a lot of different steels and I would love to one day pick up another one. I just have a couple more on the list, but this is a very therapeutic slicer. CNC flat ground blade, really nice micro milling in the handle, both on the show side and on the lock side. Absolutely no chance of lock failure. You can whack this. I'm not going to whack it because that would be whacking all of them. But coming in at number three in my top USA made frame locks, probably one of the favorite top five knives in my collection is the SPK Lamia, which brings us to number two. And number two is by far the most intricate knife, most intricate USA made knife I have in my collection. This is my Michael Zeba S5, a collaboration on just the knife design with Jason Knight, who did the blade, designed the blade. Michael designed the handle. It is a titanium, heavily internally milled, so it's not as heavy as it would look, knife. You've got this beautiful hollow ground recurved M390 blade, which is a therapeutic slicer. Whoops, don't want to cut my finger off. It is a therapeutic slicer, even though I'm down to a crappy piece of paper that I can't get an angle on. Very slicey, very tactical because it's got that poon. It's a flipper deployment. When I first picked up this knife, I could every now and then get my finger in that groove, and then all of a sudden I lost that ability. I don't know if I just forgot where I was putting it and I don't carry it enough, but I like to grip it right up here above the flipper tab and then use my finger to rest it in that harpoon, and I've got an absolute slurpy saver, I've got an absolute cutting tool, a hard use knife that has so many reasons not to use it as a hard use knife. This artwork that Michael engraves on all these knives, this is the Odin pattern. He's a Norse god, that is Odin there. You've got these ruins here on uh, around the pivot, You've got all this thematic scenery. He's commented on this post several times that I post it and tell me just to keep looking at it that there's so much more story here than what just meets the eye. You've got these tumbled skulls that make up this backspacer that are actually jeweled and one large skull that comes on the bag as a backspacer. You flip the backspacer over and you've got these ruins. And I'm sure if you could... Uh, decode the ruins, what they say, it would help draw the story together. But the drop on this knife is majestic. The action is to die for. And it is coming in at number two. We will move Tippy. And we will go to number one. Sorry about that, guys. And yes, number one is going to be for the best frame lock in my collection right now today, USA made, it's the Koenig Mini Areas. Has absolutely no lock failure. Drops from as soon as you break the lock bar. Here comes Tippy again. I apologize, guys. She just wants attention. But you've got micro milling throughout the titanium handles both on the lock side and the show side. You've got this blue anode, captive hardware, beautifully done. Fantastic belt satin flat and stonewashed M390 blade. This knife, whereas the original areas was too big for me, this knife is just perfect. It is a great EDC size. The clip is cash money. The action is unlike any I've experienced, and it is just an absolute banger. And that's why it comes in at number one. So, to recap, in our top ten subjective from my collection, USA Made Frame Locks, we have got the Koenig Mini Arius. We've got the Michael Zeba S5. We have the SPK Lamia. We have 
the three inch hinder eclipse or XM18 one cliff. We have the Medford Slim Eddy. We have the McNeese Mac 2 three and a half. We have Joseph's Isabella's awesome art be up with a little bit of uh, a little bit of our man there. I'm gonna set him off to the side so I can get the rest of these knives up here, and then we'll slip him back. We've got the Hinder Eclipse. We've got the Medford Infraction. All these frame locks, all these USA made. So that's what kind of brings them all to this video, which is me trying to get creative and come up with different ways to show you guys my knives before we go into the full collection dive, which could take a few days. Um, and then we've got our Strider SNG. And I'm going to squeeze in here our little Plague Doctor Spartan Harshie. Joe Isabella's Be Up. Be Up. Guys, thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. I appreciate you more than you know. All I ask is please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.